no soul is going to get you into heaven. I can I get amen? Mm-hmm. No, no lights and glitter is going to get you into heaven. It is a word of God and your understanding that is going to get you into heaven. We have something very, very exciting for you. A message I think is well-timed. Um, today I'm talking from a series dealing with broken gates. Uh, This series, I think, is crucial for the Christian church, that the broken gates, and it comes out of Nehemiah chapter 2, where the enemy came and broke the walls down and destroyed and burned the gates down so that they couldn't be used anymore. Remember, gates represent uh, certain things, uh, the entryways into our lives and out of our lives. And so I believe that this well-timed word is a time for this season right now that the Christian church has had the world to come in and to attack and to burn and break the gates in our life. So now we don't have any barriers to stop the, the, the world from coming in and affecting how we view marriage, how we view truth. Uh, but. Through this word, I I think it's well time in this series. So I encourage you to order the series Broken Gates. Within you and me, the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God and through his word has given us strength that we can meet the challenge. So as we go into the word today, I want you to put your notes uh, on paper and I want you to, to see what God is saying to you and speaking to you and confirming in you. And I believe that you're going to rise to the challenge. So let's go into the message. And at the end of the message, I have a couple words, special things I want to share just with you. Let's go to the message. Understand it. We get to know God as we know him. We love him and trust him. And as we trust him, we live a life that is pleasing unto him. And we raise and train our children in the way that they should go. Right. And we and, and we send mixed signals um, as churches. And as parents, I'll give you a prime example that that um, um, many times in, in churches, we want our kids to have a great time. OK, when they go to children's church, man, we want them to have a good time. We want them to interact. We want them to have fun. Um, but they need to be learning something. And if we are not careful, if we're not balanced, they'll go out and rock out. In the, in the classrooms, uh, in children's church, and they'll jump around, they'll play, they have a great time, and, and then, but they can't stay in children's church forever. So what happens is, if we're not careful, and we just, and it's not balanced, then they'll just have fun, they'll run around, jump around, rock out, then they come at a certain age, because they can't stay back there forever, sit into the main service, and all of a sudden, we're boring. We're boring because... We're sitting there just listening. We amen and clap every now and then. But they're used to just jumping around and having a good time. And so when that happens, then all of a sudden, y'all are born. Something's wrong with church. Um, you know, uh, the spear is not there. Or, you know, people say all kinds of stuff. And, and they go off, they grow up, and they start their own churches. And guess what happens? They start their own churches and and then they're jumping around. It's all about entertainment and it's not about the word of God being the center of the church. Amen. Right. And so, well, I was just going to say this real quick, that it's the same way in the church Mm -hmm. and that that we can't send mixed signals, you know, to the congregation. Mm -hmm. Um, And as parents, we can't send mixed signals. So that means when we're at home and our kids see us watching the game or watching that popular show that comes on and we tweeting about it, we Facebooking, we on the phone animated about, you know, who did what on this particular show or we jumping around going crazy at the game, right. at the concert. Yeah. You know, but then we come to church and we sit there and we barely clap. We barely say amen. Barely respond. We barely respond. The music's going. I mean, and, and the preacher and, and the musicians are giving it all they have. And you just going, yeah, you know, that sends a mixed signal. Well, and those mixed signals come because oftentimes we've allowed the world to shape yeah. how we see Christ and how we view <clears throat> Christianity. And so if it's not 
you know, the latest and the greatest, if it's not flashy, if it's not sure. entertaining, mm -hmm. then there's something wrong with it. It's not good enough. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Oh, I did my church thing. But, hey, it's not as exciting yeah. as that football game. Oh, it's yeah. not exci as exciting sure. as that sale at Macy's. It's not as exciting as that shoes, those shoes or that new purse. You know, those things excite me. Yeah. But when it comes to the Word of God in church, Oh, the excitement level just drops way down. Yeah. Yeah. And all those things that I mentioned, the game, the shopping, the awesome clothes, it's and the all friends, about and the entertainment, it's all about me. Yeah. And it is not doing not one thing for your eternity. But we're talking about the church of God and about Jesus Christ. Oh, we're talking about an eternal impact. So instead of the world shaping how we view Christ yes. and how we view Christianity, as Christians, because we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, Christ, the Word of God, should shape how I view and how I see the world. And that's how we should parent. We should parent from that perspective of having a Christian, a Christ-like worldview and not a worldly view of Christ in the church. Amen. Amen. I think that's great. And and, and I just want to, again, um, for, for those who may be viewing <clears throat> on television and online, that that um, what we're talking about is strategic parenting and, and this, this the need to equip the next generation, right, to fight the good fight of faith and and, uh, and to face the, the, the chaos that, that's growing. Uh, and so that we as believers don't get swept away. Um, so, so as we continue on, I, I want us to jump into, you know, some key things about strategic parenting. I think some things that, that we learned through the word of God that we exercise. And we have, um, we have uh, two children in college right now. Uh, they're both at top notch institutions uh, um, uh, one's been able to travel well they've all been able to travel um, around the world they have been uh, you have uh, some of them in Ivy League schools or in Ivy League summer camps or um, uh, getting ready to go to Ivy League grad school and, I mean so they're doing really well making great grades and and they're thousands of miles away <laughs> and so uh, and and let me say this quite frank we don't have the money for to afford all that and so we got too many kids and not enough money and so so we saw early on that that in order to get them equipped for this world as we um saw it based upon their gifts and their talents that they had to focus on the, you know, the three A's. I, I, the, I call it a triple A plan. Athletics, um, academics, and the arts, right? God is going to give them something in there. And then when he give them something, then we're going to grow that um, in the light of the word of God. And God is going to provide. And he has. Because we sure don't have the money <laughs> to... You know, to, to do it like that. I mean, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars for them at these programs. They've been able to get scholarships, but they are hard workers because they learn their work ethic by watching us in ministry backed up with the word of God. Yeah, and, and it all started from, you know, when we were married and, you know, we had one, two, then three, then uh oh, four, five, and six kids. Oh, Lord to not take on a worldly view of sure. having a large family. Oh, but yeah. we embraced having six children. Yeah, good, and good. I, I'm going to cut you off right there because I want you to talk about this because as a mom, uh, and this is really for, for those, uh, for single parents and for parents with four or more kids. When we say this, you, you're going to know what we're talking about. Maybe some with three, but but... We you know we ran into this, um, having multiple kids, and how that affected our walk. Right, 
And it, it really strengthened our walk because we had seemingly what seemed like to us the world against us and always criticizing the number of kids we had. And when we found like we were having another and always saying, oh, man, y'all having another child? How y'all going to feed it? How y'all going to provide? What are y'all going to do? You know, and we chose to stick with what the word of God said about children and not look at our family through the world's eyes. Because if we did, we'd be frustrated, angry, and upset. And so we decided to embrace the gift of life, the little gifts of life that the Lord blessed us with, and to not allow that negativity and that negative way of thinking to drag us down. And so in raising them, um, we never apologize for it being a lot of kids in the family. We never looked at it as something that was horrible or terrible or chaotic or unreasonable, but we've taught them to care for one another, to love one another, and to trust in God. Their self-worth, their self-esteem is not founded in material things. They have learned how to love themselves and embrace who they are without having the latest and the greatest tennis shoes, without having the cell phones, without having the latest video games, without having the big, huge parties. Now, it has been a big sacrifice that we have made to raise them in the way that we believe that God wanted us to raise them. Um, when we had CJ, that meant that I had to stop working and you know stay at home to raise them, and all oh, man, that was like the worst thing I could have ever done to lay down my career, to stay at home with some kids. Girl, what's wrong with you? But when I thought about it, I said, these kids are my legacy. That's right. That's right. What I'm doing for this company, X, Y, or Z company, they're going to replace me tomorrow. And the work that I do for them is not having an eternal impact on anybody. But if I stay home and devote my time, my talent, my treasure, everything that I have to God first, and I sow that into my children, that's an eternal legacy that I'm leaving behind. It's work that is not at all wasted. You know, so I didn't see giving up a career to stay at home and raise my children as a waste of time or as a bad move. It was the best move I could have ever made, and I do not regret it, not one minute. I've had people stand in my face and criticize the decision that we made. But when I look at how our children have turned out, their character, the depth of their character, their willingness to stand for Christ, the way that God is using them as leaders in their schools, the way that they're traveling all over the world, the way that they're getting full scholarships to Ivy League colleges. Oh my goodness. I do not regret for one minute walking this thing out in terms of parenting according to God's way because his way works i am telling you we are living proof it works. that his way <laughs> it works the world's way does not work because we see the failure of the world's way in our children each and every day and it it astounds me how parents choose to still believe and put their trust in their faith in a failed system that proves that it's a failed system each and every day we put our faith in some sports league or a coach to raise our kids and to somehow turn them into a leader and a football star. And then we, we doubt whether or not Christ is actually going to work in our child's life. That is just so turned around. Yeah, you know? it, it is. And, and uh, you know, what you're saying is so true. And, and you know, and, and I, I want to say this for their parents that, that cannot afford to make that happen. Now we couldn't, uh, couldn't we couldn't afford it either. either. <laughs> but what we did is we had to shop at many of the unsavory um, stores, and uh, and, you know, and 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 I we had to start. Well, yeah, we had to start cooking. Well, you had to start cooking more, and 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 she likes to cook. But I mean, when we found out that. All we had to do is start cooking, back off from going out to eat all the time. Um, uh, we had a lot more money to pay our tithes. We never stopped paying our tithes and offerings. Amen. And, and we had more than enough to pay our tithes. And now we backed off to one car 
And so we rode around in one car because she wasn't working. and wasn't no need for two cars. She dropped me off at work or we ride around together. So so we had one car. Uh, we, we shopped at the, the um, you know, not the fancy grocery stores. Uh, we, we, we cooked more. We, um, we did a lot of stuff ourselves. And um, a lot of our kids, we, we passed clothes down. Uh, we, did, we accepted um, uh, uh, hand-me-downs or hand-me-overs. And so, um, but they were always clean. They were always nice. Well, but, and, but, and God provided. And I he mean, provided. Sure. We had people give us clothes and Brand dresses new stuff. Yeah. for our girls and stuff with still had the tags on it right you yeah. know and a garbage bags full oh yeah of brand new clothes for our kids you know i remember one year when um you know the lord just this is one way that he abundantly blessed for our children to go to private school and a private christian school yeah. and I remember when I first signed them up, and I had no idea how we were going to get those beautiful new uniforms that the school required for them to have. They wouldn't let me sneak in the ones from Target or from Anna's Linens or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I had to buy the ones from that expensive uh, store. Yeah, man. And I went to the store and stood in line, and I just looked at the prices. I didn't know what I was going to do. There was another mom from the school in the store she had a bag full of uniforms. She said, you know what? I bought these uniforms last year for my kids. And, you know, one graduated. The other one outgrew them. They're pretty much brand new. Do you need these uniforms? I said, I most certainly do. And so she said, the Lord just, you know, I saw you yeah. standing here. And he, you know, told me to give them to you. Yeah. So I received, like, a bag full of uniforms that carried our kids through for several years and I mean that's what God does he gives you more than enough and it may not come the way that you wanted or you you thought it should come the way you're used to it coming but he is faithful to provide everything more than enough in terms of what you need if you're deciding to live and to parent and raise your kids after his way yeah and um yeah, I, I remember that. I, I tell you, you know, God has provided so much, and and yes, our kids have been uh, go to private school, and but the way it happens is that all of the family has pulled together to make that happen, and so our families believe in in our kids so much so that everybody is pitching in in some form or fashion to keep them there. Even the school itself, there have been years when we were like, we don't know if they're coming back. And the school has called and said, no, yeah. they're coming back. We're holding a space for them. Whenever you can pay it, just pay it whenever. But we want to make sure that your kids are back in school next year. Yeah. You know, so God, he, he works. His way works. We've oh. We have to trust his way and follow after his way. Yeah. And, and, and I was going to say this earlier, for those who are single parents and, and you know, y'all saying, well, I can't stop working and this, it's not about stopping working and, and, and the like, but it is about whatever level you are, you put Christ first. We chose to put Christ first against all odds, against what people thought, against what they said, against what was um, expected of us. We knew, based upon the word, when, when our pastor taught us the word, Pastor right. Bill, Bishop Bill Hines, when he taught us the word of God, he said, trust the word, fight the good fight of faith, right. and we believe the word, and the word works. It works, it works, it works, it works. And, and, and I wasn't the biggest, deepest believer when we first got into the word of God. <laughs> Oh man, but you know, God turned my heart and, and, and I had no idea I'd be pastoring. And, and so, and you know, the word of God, and you know, as you continue to dig, you'll see the Bible says that a man should not desire to lead uh, the house of God and his family's a wreck. And I'm paraphrasing, but his kids don't like him and his, and they don't respect him. I mean, something's wrong with that when your kids are just going crazy and you're trying to pastor people 
you need to kind of back up and you got to prioritize and you have to take care of your home get that right and then seek to lead people and it's okay to back off and get your family right we have to make sure that all money is not good money as they say uh so we have to we have to look forward to the next generation we have to look ahead that's what i'm saying we gotta look ahead and we have to know how to train them in the right way and so uh as we're talking about this we only have a uh, about you know a few more minutes to go um but I, I do want to uh get this in real quick and and again you can call and and order the uh the dvd and and we would love for you to um contact Crossing Point Church, uh, the information you'll see it flash on your screen. Let me say this also: um, you can download our app uh, either on the Apple or the Google Store. If you go to your store and look up Crossing Point, that's one word, Christian Church. Uh, you can download it, and there are uh, sermons on there, there are seminars on there, things that we're talking about right now are on there. So uh, I think it's important. You know, to uh, go and really take um, take account of where your your family is, and and what you see your kids doing. And and let me say this: as parents, we have to start early. We have to be consistent, and we have to be consistent over a long period of time. And so it's not just a flash in the pan, as many times we'll do, but we have to we have to go a long term. Um, now we have you know some other sections that we're going to be dealing with and and today we're not going to get them all in because of our time on the program um, but again uh, we have other programs on are you again you can order the rest of the series but what we're dealing with again is strategic parenting and so we're going to be um uh, on our next uh, series of programs we're going to be talking about how to at different ages address issues okay so um being a mom and a dad a young mom and a dad um having toddlers um what to do when you first put them in school uh, what happens when they get to adolescence <laughs> we have boys and girls um how do you keep them as a cohesive bunch how do you handle teenagers and get them to take ownership of their smaller siblings um how do you get them ready to graduate um how do you keep them uh focused in college and and how do you keep them motivated and and and, and really um uh growing and maturing at the correct rate so so all of these we'll be talking about in the next several programs so yeah i want you to stay tuned and, and i know that uh first lady i know that um and, and i love this because i know you have a lot of information um from a mom's perspective because you're awesome mom and awesome mom awesome mom and and it's reflected in our girls you know it's reflected in how our son treats um uh his sisters and, and treats uh um uh young ladies that are around uh, and so so we definitely want to delve into those things um uh, in closing, uh, a couple things you want to say before we close. Well, just in all of those topics that we'll be discussing in the next segments, and you know, it, it, it works across the board, whether you're a single mom, as Pastor said, a single dad, whether um, you've adopted children, whether you have a blended family, whether if you're in a, a married relationship, if God has blessed you with children, know that they are a blessing from him. So he is the one, since he gave you the gift, he's responsible for the gift, and he's also the one who will equip you to raise and train that child in a way that, that honors him and that is well-pleasing to him. So make sure that you tune in to the upcoming segments. Make sure that you, um, you hear what God has to say in terms of parenting strategically, raising your children in the way that they should go. And we just look forward to be a blessing to you and your family. So thank you so much for your time. Amen. All right. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Well, my friends, we're at the end of another broadcast. 
I've so appreciated you tuning in to Crossing Point TV. I want to let you know that, you know, there's a need out there. There's a need in every ministry to help the gospel go forward. We can only do it with your help. And here at Crossing Point, we believe in purpose partners. You know, God's called us to reach out to encourage those who are listening, who are ministered to all around the world, just like yourself, to find their purpose in God. Will you be a partner with us today? A purpose partner, a 50-50 purpose partner. You know, people ask, Pastor, well, why is it 50-50 purpose partner? It's because we're in this together. So if you would look on screen and you would contact us with the provided information, be a 50-50 partner and you'll be part of empowering people to find their purpose. Until next week, God bless you. Thank you for watching CrossingPoint.tv. To obtain a copy of today's message, please contact the Crossing Point Ministry. CrossingPoint.tv is a ministry of Crossing Point Christian Church. This program is made possible only through your prayers and the generous support of our 5050 Purpose Partners.